Well, greetings in the matchless name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. As Pastor was talking about the scripture from Revelation of Christ standing at the door and knocking and saying, if you let me in, I'll come in. I was reminded of this young preacher who had just come to a new town and was desperate to build his congregation. So he decided he would go out into the community and do exactly that. So he saw a lady and a gentleman and a couple of the whole family was in the house and he could see them through the window, but they would not, he kept knocking and they wouldn't open the door. He was trying to invite them to church. So he wrote down Revelation 3.20 and put it in a, on his business card and put it, hoping that they would go and open it up. And they did. They opened it up and they read, see, I was knocking and if you had let me in, I would have come and shared a meal with you. The next morning in the collection plate, he was surprised to see his business card. And on the other side, it had Genesis 3.10. I heard you knocking. I was afraid because I was naked. So, <laughs> so uh, somewhere between the two extremes, uh, between Genesis and Revelation, is the book we believe. Adrian Rogers said, the Bible is God's love letter to his children. If you're not feeling loved this morning, you've been reading someone else's mail. <laughs> so as we dive into it, my introduction is very simple. I'm a Hindu Brahmin by birth, an Indian by upbringing, an American by choice, a Christian by the redemption and shed blood at Calvary, and an evangelist by burden. Today I'm going to weave you through a narrative of the prophet Jeremiah. We're not even going to go past 20 verses in the first chapter before we will get five faith declarations that you and I can use in this week to be holy and mighty ambassadors for the living Christ. Now I heard it said somewhere that every third person in this world is either amazingly beautiful and unusually bright or incredibly handsome and unfailingly brilliant. So take a good look at the person on your left. Go ahead. Now take a good look at the person on your right. Like me, you're probably convinced it ain't either one of them. <laughs> From this moment forward, think of yourself as that third person. You were designed for accomplishment, engineered for success, and endowed with the seeds of greatness. The living, loving Savior died for each and every one of you. Our past was forgiven because of the shed blood. Our future was assured at the right hand of God the Father. And all we have to do is live out our ambas ambassadorial duties in the present. Now, if you know Jeremiah, by modern benchmarking standards, Jeremiah was a failed prophet. <laughs> he lamented for 40 years, and nobody turned. Here was a man who prophesied that Babylon would be the one that would be the downfall of Judah. He saw the exiles go away. He served under five different kings, but for 40 years he wept for a nation. We may be in those precarious times right now where all of us are lamenting for our own land. As we look around us at the hopelessness that seems to envelop our day, at the helplessness that seems to grip our moment, at the haplessness that seems to invade our family. What can we learn from this so-called failed prophet who God never quit on? Here was a man who complained and lamented. He was known as a weeping prophet. And maybe you and I weep sometimes for that. Now, don't hear what I'm not saying. Nowhere has it been said that Christians have to walk around grinning from year to year like they've eaten a banana sideways. That's insanity. But I'm talking about how do we put a little purpose in our gait? Let's look at this real carefully, five faith declarations. In Jeremiah 1, it says in 4, The Lord gave me a message. He said, I knew you before I formed you in your mother's womb. Before you were born, I set you apart and appointed you as my spokesperson to the world. I knew you before, while you were in your mother's womb. Before you were in your mother's womb, I set you apart and I appointed you to be a spokesperson to the world. See, the first faith declaration is, I am important to the kingdom of God, therefore I will act like an ambassador. I am important to the kingdom of God, therefore I will act like an ambassador. 
How many of us leave our Sunday services? And on Monday, at our regular secular world that we seem to operate in, where we make a living. See, Sunday we try to shape a life. During the week we try to make a living. But there are no different identities. Hear me carefully. There is no one identity during the week that is your secular identity and one identity on the weekend which is your God identity. There is only one identity for 24 hours of every day and that is a biblically God-ordained identity. Living that out means you have to act regal and royal. Ask yourself if you can be an ambassador for the living God because he set you apart. In my wildest dreams, I never imagined lying on a nondescript beach in a remote southern Indian town, looking at the stars above, wondering if opportunity and hope, free enterprise, would exist for someone like me. I never imagined that 25 years later, after that dream, I would find myself in the heart of Illinois, talking to people about God's providence. See, in order to imagine that you're an ambassador to God, when passion is born, you will get a glimpse of your potential, not the other way around. People say, I want everything to line up. God, if you make this, 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 and this work, you line up all this, you take care of these bills, you take care of that teenager, everything will work. But God's saying, that's not about to happen. I knew you before you were in your mother's womb. And before you were even a glimpse in someone's eye, that was about to happen. I set you apart as a spokesperson to nation. What a regal promise. But are we willing to claim it? And the claim is where the fun begins. C.S. Lewis says most people would rather stand on the shores, look at the seas in front of them, and imagine the navigable paths that other sailors and adventurers took before them. The smart ones would just get a map. See, the Bible is a map. It's God's promise. It's completely illustrated if you read it. So Howard Hendricks says, either sin will keep you from the Bible or the Bible will keep you from sin. John Maxwell says you can pay now and play later or you can play now and pay later. Either way in life you will pay and play. You decide when. And I've heard 13-year-old people in far-off lands, give renditions of the Bible that would make adult preachers who have advanced degrees weep. What God is saying is in order to be a spokesperson, well, you don't need a PhD. Maybe you do, partial head damage. <laughs> or maybe you need a THD, total head damage. I don't know. But what God is saying is, I have set you apart, and are you going to act like that ambassador? The regality. See, that's a fun thing. Just try it sometime when someone says, whoa, whoa, whoa. tell me a little bit about yourself. I'm an ambassador. Of what? Of the only kingdom that will never end. Someone asked a preacher one time, what is eternity like? What is this kingdom that will never end? He says, you take an ant and put it on a steel ball the size of the earth and let the ant go round and around that steel ball. When the ant corrodes that steel ball the size of the earth, that's when eternity begins. It's a long time. I like how Zig Ziglar put it. He says, you're going to be dead a lot longer than you're going to be alive. Start acting like an ambassador on this side. And when we get to the other shore, as we heard sung, we can stand in that line. Watch the other line of people for whom you were an ambassador and through your witness gave them citizenship to the eternal kingdom. That's what this is about. If you move a little further in Jeremiah 1.9, it says, Jeremiah, of course, starts complaining. He says, don't say that. He says, I can't speak for you. I'm too young. Lord says, for you must go wherever I send you and say whatever I tell you. And don't be afraid of the people, for I will be with you and take care of you. I, the Lord, have spoken. Then the Lord touched my mouth and said, see, I have put my words in your mouth. So if the first faith declaration is, I am important to the kingdom of God, therefore I will be an ambassador. The second faith declaration is, God's word is in my mouth, therefore I will speak as an oracle of God. God's word is in my